That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Flash, the fourth film directed by Andy Muschietti, which is being released courtesy of Warner Brothers on June 16th, 2023. Do I know Andy's other films? Mm-hmm. They all three previously starred Jessica Chastain, including his 2013 debut, Mama, and then It, Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. Oh. I thought this movie was pretty good. I don't know... Where have I seen The Flash before? In, like, a Batman movie? In the previous Justice League film, I believe. Oh. Makes an appearance. Well... I like the character of The Flash, and I liked Ezra Miller as The Flash. Barry Allen. Barry Allen. Mm-hmm. The story, Barry Allen uses his super speed to change the past, but his attempt to save his family creates a world without superheroes, forcing him to race for his life in order to save the future. So this story is pretty layered because we're in like a multiverse time travel situation would you call it a multiverse of madness (laughs) it felt very familiar because it is seen this before several many times time crimes the nacho vigilando film well or like the what is that doctor strange that's the this this, this could have been called uh if i could turn back time the multiverse of madness (laughs) (laughs) okay the basic story Barry Allen, the Flash, he one day, so I don't know if we already know this from a different movie, but his mom died as the result of like uh, like a home invasion and his dad is in prison for the crime. But Barry knows his dad didn't do it. Like he knew that his dad was out at the grocery store and he saw his dad return when the attack was happening, but they can't prove it. And Batman has helped the Flash get surveillance video but the video, unfortunately, doesn't show the dad's face because the dad was looking down. So one day the Flash is thinking about his parents and gets emotional and starts running. And he runs so fast that he turns back time. So he has the bright idea that maybe he can go back in time and stop his mom from being killed. But he doesn't go back far enough. He ends up showing up on the day he received his powers. Mm-hmm. And Batman already told his ass, like, don't you do that because basically like the butterfly effect. So when he goes back, he bumps into his younger self, like his 18-year-old self. And that creates a problem because he shows up on the day, like I said, that he got his powers. So he's like, well, I need to make sure that you, 18-year-old version of me, gets your powers. Because the 18-year-old version of him has grown up with a mother and so is vastly different than yeah. the actual Barry Allen. But when they show up to replicate the scene, like at the lab with the lightning and the chemicals, the lightning strikes the Flash and his younger self. So what happens is the Flash loses his power, and now his younger self, who still looks like Ezra Miller, has the powers. So now they need to figure out what to do because there is a villain... The villain is... General Zod, played by Michael Shannon, who was in previous... Who's like a Superman villain. Superman films. Mm -hmm. And he's looking for who we... I'm so stupid. I've seen these posters everywhere, and I thought that was Henry Cavill playing Superman in the poster. Henry Cavill's not in this movie. No, and why didn't we get a... Terrence Stamp played General Zod, and we don't get any... Well, we can get into that. Archival footage of him. We can get into that, but we get Superman's cousin... Because his Superman's name is Kaleo, mm-hmm. and then Su- S- Superwoman's name, Wonder Woman's name is Supergirl. Well, they all have names like oh, yeah, yeah. something Lel. Di- Diana. No, you're, Wonder Woman's Diana. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. But we don't have Superman. We have his cousin, so Super Cousin. Supergirl. And isn't her name like Carla or K- <laughs> Kara? Kara. Played by that's Sasha Kaye. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's technically Supergirl. And you get oh, that's a, Supergirl? Yeah. You get, oh. a, you get a nod to Helen Slater. That's right, we do. Yeah. We'll talk about mm-hmm. it. But the Flash is like, I need help because we need to defeat General Zod and I can't do it alone. And the Flash keeps saying, in, in my universe, we have the Avengers or Justice League. Justice League, which is Batman, Superman, Aquaman, all these people. So in this new universe, he's like, well, we need to find all these superheroes, but they don't exist except for Batman. 
but Batman's retired. So when we meet Batman in the original universe, it's Ben Affleck. Mm -hmm. With Jeremy Irons as Alfred. But in the new universe, Batman is Michael Keaton. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that was going to... Michael Keaton has a very large role in this movie. He sure does, yeah. Which I like. I like Michael Keaton. I do, I'm too. excited for Beetlejuice. More excited for that. Mm -hmm. But Batman decides to help the Flash because he's in retirement because Gotham City is like the safest city in the world in this universe. But he's like, I'll come out of retirement to help you. And they need to find Superman. So they Batman does find evidence of like an extraterrestrial creature that landed and is being held in Siberia. Mm -hmm. So they take their asses over there. And when they like break in to release Superman, that's when we realize it's not Henry Cavill, it's Super Cousin. And she's not good like Superman. She's mad. Like humans ain't shit. Every time we come down here, y'all try to come after us. So she's like, I'm not helping you. But then the Flash treats her kindly, so she agrees to help. So now we have Batman, the two Flashes, and Super Cousin trying to defeat General Zod. And they're unsuccessful. And it's important to know that Batman told his ass, the Flash, he uses the analogy of like spaghetti. Yes, overcooked spaghetti, which is kind of how the film feels. Mm -hmm. That the multiverse is like spaghetti, like, you know, there are parallel lines, but sometimes they crisscross in no particular order. But there are inevitable intersections. Like no matter what universe, multiverse you're in, some things will always be the same. And we find out that General Zod destroying this multiverse will always be that. So then the Flash and his younger self realize that they, no matter what they do, it's never going to change. And we need to get to a specific thing about that. But so then it's kind of a sad ending because that universe just goes to hell. But when the Flash comes back to the universe we met him in, which I guess would be our universe, he is able to say, he's not able to save his mom, but he is able to get his dad out of jail because we realized that we never saw the dad's face in the surveillance footage because the item he was grabbing was low on the shelf. So the Flash puts all the items his dad was looking for on the top of the shelf. So he looks up into the camera and that gets his dad out of jail. And the final gag is Batman calls the Flash to tell him congratulations. And when Batman shows up, it's not Ben Affleck, it's George Clooney. So clearly, he messed up something in time. And then the post credit scene is... Useless. It's, it's, it's the Flash and Aquaman leaving a bar drunk. Mm -hmm. The end. But I was reading that that's supposed to be... like, Because in that scene, they, the Flash tells Aquaman what happened. And he's like, yeah, I saw all these different versions of Batman, Superman. But in every universe you were always Aquaman. Which is good for Jason Momoa's contract. So I was reading that maybe that's what that's about, that even if they don't do the trilogy of Aquaman movies that were planned, that they're acknowledging that he brought that character to life. I don't know. But to someone like me, it didn't mean much except drunk Jason Momoa. It'll mean 30 years from now when the first generation of people playing these superheroes are dead and we get another version of the same thing will uh, will be seeing him. What did I like? I think the movie looks good. I mean, it feels expensive. Although, there is... Every time they're in the time travel portal... Which, it looks like they're in an arena, the way it's set up, of repeated images. In, in hell, because yeah, it's fiery. It's Dante's Inferno, and it looks like a cartoon. Or a video game, yeah. It, it, it the, the CGI is a little crunchy, I thought. And, Surprisingly, in those parts, yeah. But everything else I thought looked great. I think the humor, it's hard. So the reason I wouldn't give it a higher score is I liked Ezra Miller and I didn't, I don't know him from anything except we watched uh, Dolly Land. Dolly Land, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's in that. Uh, because is he the Flash in earlier movies? Uh, they are the Flash in an earlier film, yes. But uh, uh -huh. you haven't seen, you know, Ezra Miller was technically a child star because he was in, they were in Antonio Campos' After School, which I highly recommend from 2008. And of course, uh, Lynn Ramsey's We Need to Talk About Kevin, I think is must-see in Ezra Miller's filmography. You've also seen them in a funny but bit role in Trainwreck in a sex scene with Amy Schumer, if you recall. Oh, that's Ezra Miller? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I liked Ezra Miller in this movie as himself, like in our universe. But when we meet his 18-year-old self, oh, that and was so great. The 18-year-old Barry Allen is, is, is nails on chalkboard, yeah. Up until, so then at a point, like the flash goes off on his younger self. Like, you are so annoying. And then he kind of calms down. But then he's still kind of annoying. So that kind of drove me crazy. But aside from that, I thought the humor works well. I like seeing Michael Keaton. Um, yeah. And I think the story, well, I really like the actor playing the Flash's mom. Okay, Maribel Verdu, who most people probably remember from Itu Mama Tambien. But if you liked her, and she's beautiful, and she kind of gives, a, she kind of adds what Marissa Tomei does to the Spider Man films for me. But check out a film she did called Blanca Nieves, which is black and white, beautiful, basically a Snow White story, because that's what that means. Yeah, I like her a lot too. And at the end of the film, when the Flash realizes he can't save his mom, he goes back. And that's also the time when he goes back to rearrange the, the, the cans of groceries. He has a final meeting with his mom mm -hmm. to say goodbye. I thought that was really emotional and very well done. Yeah. Surprising for this type of film. What didn't I like? The younger Flash. I also thought when we meet the younger Flash's um, roommates, they mimic the real Flash's like, co-workers. Mm -hmm. And I thought they were so annoying and then that entire scene where they're talking about like, because they keep referencing Eric Stoltz is in Back to the Future and that like Michael, they're confusing actors we know as like other characters we know because we're in an alternate universe. Mm -hmm. I really didn't like those roommates. That yeah. that humor did not work for me it at didn't. all. It uh, the, didn't. It opens with Barry uh, bemoaning the fact that he calls himself the janitor of the Justice League because he's always cleaning, cleaning up. up after Batman. And there's one scene where this this hospital is being destroyed and I'm assuming it's an homage to Battleship Potemkin with all of the babies falling out of the I was, hospital. <laughs> that was kind of extreme because we see all these newborn babies from like the, the de labor and delivery ward of this hospital. They fall out of like... Also, like, are there hospitals like that where like... It seems weird that you keep, like, the newborns on, like, the 50th it, floor of this high-rise. But anyway, they... All these babies are flying out of this window in slow motion, and the Flash is trying to figure out how to save them. And there are, like, scalpels coming towards the babies. There's and, acid, but it looks... And acid. It looks like the babies are on the top floor, and what, which me, it means that the acid was in the room with the babies. Why? Yeah, why is there, like, sulfuric acid in the labor and delivery ward? But anyway, I thought that scene was actually pretty good, because it was kind of like, whoa... The, and the way he, the Flash saves them, I thought was cute. But um, I also didn't care for Super Cousin. Sasha Kaye, yeah, well, she doesn't get a lot of time to do much either, so she just seems like a sulky teenager. Yeah, she feels like an angsty young Shakira. I don't know. It, I didn't care for her. Sorry, girl. I didn't either. Ron, Livis Ron Livingston is fine as the dad, who doesn't really have much to do, except seem resigned to his... Fate. And wear um, kind of a bad wig. but Yeah, and Kiersey Clemens plays a love interest for Barry. I didn't care for her. I didn't trust her ass. So her character's name is Iris, mm -hmm. and she went to college with Barry. And she's now a journalist. And now she's a journalist, and when we first meet her, she's trying to ask him about she's, his dad's court trial. She's approaching him as a journalist. But she seemed real fake, and then he he's so damn stupid, he invites her over, and then... I don't know. In, in the end, it seems that they might have a relationship. You just saw her in Swarm. By the way, who is she in Swarm? She's the girlfriend of Dominique. Bring my fish back when Dominique has become assumed a male. Really, persona. she mm -hmm. looks very different in this movie. Oh, well, she's she's been several many things. Oh, I bet they filmed this movie before Swarm. That could be. So she's older in Swarm because she looks younger. Sure, Maybe she styled differently. I like her better in Swarm. The same, but, she, but again, she had nothing to do in this. I, the doctor's fine, but that character I thought was kind of raggedy. Like, I would not trust her. We have to talk about Ben Affleck as Batman. Oh, that's my first note. When we first saw Ben in the Batman uniform, I gasped. Like, <laughs> he looks crazy. It's, he looks like he's the demon version of Batman with that mask. I, because his bottom, the, the bottom portion of his face, the, the, the skin that is exposed, looked like hamburger meat. And then he looks real thickums in that. And it's not about me. I mean, I would look just as thick in that costume, but it, I don't know. It, it, <laughs> no, but the top part of his bat mask is he looks evil in a way that's 
jarring. I don't know. It's just when it's we, distracting. We, we, we see him out of the, the bat costume more than in it. And I think he looks like Ben Affleck, you know, tired and over it. But yeah, when we first see him with the costume, I gasped. Mm -hmm. That shit was wild. So we start to get all of the, this archival footage. We get Christopher Reeve and Helen Slater. and But I think it's interesting. They show Adam West and... Well, you need to explain that. So in the end, when they're going, like, when they're realizing, like, we cannot change the fate of this universe being destroyed, then we see all the versions of Superman. We see worlds colliding. But worlds colliding. You, again, as I was saying, Adam West and George Reeves, who were, you know, television's Batman and Superman, Ben Affleck played George Reeves in Hollywoodland, whose death is very controversial because they think it's an unsolved murder. We also see Nicolas Cage as Superman. A CGI version of Nicolas Cage. A Hoot. pretty bad CGI version. Uh -huh. But there were hooting and hollering from the audience because, you know, I, I think most people that follow this lore know that Nick Cage desperately wanted to play Superman and almost did in the late 90s. Also, in this time portal, there's like some sort of like evil creature who it's... It's hinted at earlier on in the film, and then we see it a couple more times. So, of course, it's like, well, what the hell is this creature in the time portal? We realize it's Barry Allen, his younger self, if he never left. Like, he kept trying and trying and trying. And becomes a like a bejeweled crustacean. Because every time he goes back to try to save the universe, he gets stabbed by a piece of, like, Kryptonian something or other. So, he's done it so many times that his entire body... And he looks like tree bark because he's covered in all this shrapnel. So I actually thought like that component to the, I kind of wish they would have removed a lot of the stuff and just had it be that the Flash wants to go back in time to save his mom. And as a result, he gets caught in this time portal and then him trying to figure out how to get out of it. I think that would have been enough to make a really interesting movie. But then they throw all the extra stuff in and... I just wanted it to be weirder because, of course, with Ezra Miller in there, I, I was thinking this should have played like Francois Ozone's Double Lover where they start to be attracted to themselves. Well, you know that's not going to happen. <laughs> no, but... But I did think that Ezra want. Miller um, did... I do feel like this movie feels a little more off-center than maybe other superhero movies. Yeah. And it, maybe it's because of Ezra Miller. Uh, but again, there's kind of a uh, unhappiness to it. Like, the, there's just, there's not going to be a satisfying way to end this. Not every universe can be... Which I liked. Mm -hmm. That it's not a happy ending, per se. Uh, so, going still going through my notes, we do see the Flash naked, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised that we get a lot of... There's a scene, because the younger Barry Allen doesn't realize that he can't wear normal clothes when he runs fast, because the friction will just ignite it on fl into flames. So... He runs too fast and all his clothes burn off. So he's in the middle of this big intersection naked. And we spent quite a bit of time with him naked. In the, I, I, I was kind of surprised. I was that. surprised at that as well. But. Okay. I'm not sure who I'm going to put on my worst hair list. Which version of Barry Allen. Because both look kind of crazy to me. So maybe as a, a pair. Oh. They'll get an honorable mention. I don't think it'll make my top five. But the younger Barry I thought looked crazy. The Allen twins. Mm -hmm. Another thing I didn't like is the film feels kind of repetitive. Mm -hmm. Like we, like we get it that you are trying to go back and you, like even the same dialogue about. Um, well, they're and they're now they're trying to explain. We we get thrown terminology like it's retrochismal, which is you know a nice way to say abstract, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A good scene was so. The Flash has lost his powers, so then at a point he's like, the only way we're going to defeat General Zod is if I get my powers back, so we need to try to recreate what happened to me way back when. And Batman's like, this shit is crazy, but let's do it. To the Dr. Frankenstein shit. So he's like, well, let's harness a lightning bolt and let's throw some chemicals on your ass. And they do it, and it doesn't work. And it it was pretty graphic. Like, he looked... Ezra Miller looked like he had been electrocuted mm -hmm. in this role. And they're like, well, let like do it again. And Batman's like, I can't. You fried my equipment. So then that's when Super Cousin comes down and flies his ass up into the heavens. Lets him get electric, struck by lightning. And then it does work. But I thought that scene was not bad. And then now that his powers have been regained, younger Barry Allen 
makes a Flash costume out of Batman's old costume, mm-hmm. which I thought was kind of cute because he's spray painting it red. It's cute. It's filled with more cute moments than I was expecting from these kind of films. And maybe that's a credit to the screenwriter, Christina Hodson. Uh, I see Joby Harold, who recently was also working on Transformers Rise of the Beast, is credited with a story. It has a story credit as well. But I don't know. I think you can tell that a different approach, I think, was taken in the script. Yes, so I appreciate it for that. I did like Ezra Miller as half of their role. Um, And I was engaged for the most part. If I saw this on an airplane, I'd be happy with it. Yes, on the first (laughs) leg of a European flight. What would you give this movie? I think two and a half is fair. Again, it's doing something that we've already seen the Spider-Man films do, the live action ones. And I guess the multiverse is here to stay forever forever and ever. I'm so... I don't know what to give this film. I feel like I would give it two and three quarter. I guess... I guess I'll give it two and a half out of five. It was fine. It's fine. I enjoyed it enough. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.